P P fifty one D challenge campaign mission three. It's gonna be. Oh, well, we don't know. Oh, taking off in a damn crosswind. This is kind of a bitch. Okay, so if you're having trouble with this, you may want to study it academically a little bit before you actually hop into the mission. Basically, we're going to have a crosswind, and we want to find out exactly what direction that's coming from. Um, hang on. Well, we, we have to talk to ATC here a little bit. So, um, it's a clear day, and there's no wind sock, so you can't see like a real pilot would. You can't get accurate information on which which way that wind's coming from. You want to take off as close to into the wind as you can. Let's see, we got wind at the ground level where we are. It's coming out of 17 degrees, so it's coming out of the north northwest at about 10 meters per second, which is what, 22 miles per hour? That's a bitch. So 17 degrees. So what we're going to do is we're going to set that, set my compass here to 17 degrees. This mission is like the last, but this time we're going to add a 10 meter per second crosswind to make things a little more interesting. Yeah, interesting, As right. before, climb 1,000 feet to complete this challenge. Okay, so that's because nobody in their right mind would do this. Okay, so 17, so the wind is coming kind of this way. So I guess it's almost perpendicular to the field anyway, so it doesn't really matter which direction I take off in. Uh, let's see, I could use the right... So I guess it's up to you. I think I'm going to take off east to west. Since I'm naturally going to want to um, use right rudder and right aileron anyway. Talk about the physics of this here. Well, like taxi. So some checks. I don't need the landing light. There's nobody else here in this mission. Set the rudder to six degrees. Maybe a little bit more if you want. Turn on our lights to be nice about things. Okay. So the trick to a crosswind takeoff is as you gain speed and your control surfaces gain authority. Oh, let's just go that way. Um, just for safety reasons, the instant you become airborne, you're at the mercy of the wind, and you better have enough speed and authority on your control surfaces by that time to be able to keep your aircraft pointing where you want it to, or you'll find yourself flipping around and just crashing into the, into the pavement. Um, so one of the things you can do to assist with this is, again, you, you want to keep your stick back to plant your tail on the ground until you're fast enough to have the authority you need to control your aircraft. That's one thing. The other thing is you want to keep your your rudder obviously where it needs to be, but you counter crosswind with aileron. And um, so as your plane gains authority, as you accelerate down the runway, you, you will need to be using, since from, in this scenario the wind's coming from the right, we'll be using right aileron. You want to roll into the wind. Otherwise it can come up under you and flip you over in the other direction which I've done plenty of times. This mission in particular gave me a lot of problems because as you can see, there's no indication of what the wind is doing. You can't visualize it. There's no wind sock. There's no precipitation. So you, you have to just get that information from the briefing. You notice like right about now, we're almost facing into the wind. And we're gonna turn kind of to the, so it's on our uh, three o'clock. And more so than in other missions, I want to have, it's going to be important that I uh, center my aircraft on the runway as closely as I can get it. Zoom out a little bit. All right, that's pretty good. And just to be fancy, let's talk to the, oh, they already cleared me. And I won't be using flaps because I think that's going to complicate the aerodynamics. If the wind is coming from this general direction. If I use flaps, that's just going to give another surface for the wind to play on 
make things a big mess and probably make a big mess of me as I flip over. So the procedure is going to be pretty much the same, when it, but we're going to accelerate more before I let the tail lift off of the ground and I'm going to uh, roll into the wind to the right. And I may still crash. I'm not really horribly used to doing this, but let's, uh, let's get moving. Using left rudder actually seems like it wants to yaw to the right for some reason. Just take a full about half half back. It's gonna get a little squirrely. I may not talk too much because I need to concentrate. Yikes. Okay. I need to gear up. And let's climb. Not as bad as I remember it being. Every bit of practice you can get, it's going to help you out. Alright. And you know what? I think I had the um, wind direction wrong. So I, was young. I had to use... Uh, left rudder to compensate and we're drifting as you can see so I don't know maybe I had it wrong but basically all you need to do is not all you need to do this just takes practice and there's no way around it you have to fly enough to get a feel for what your airplane is doing and this is very difficult in a digital thing you know you want to scan your instruments and kind of pay attention to where your nose is going which way it feels like it's going and be ready to compensate with appropriate controls. And you just have to get a feel for it over time. Um, this challenge campaign is an excellent way to do it, as frustrating as it is when you first start out. The training missions are good, but you can also build your own scenarios. The mission editor is really good, really easy to use. So uh, one thing I did that gave me a lot more fine control over the Mustang is I just set myself up for a takeoff on the runway and flew the landing pattern a lot. And you get a lot of fine control at low speed. You get a, a good sense for climb and descent rate, uh, what the throttle does, how to manage RPM, um, how it feels at low speed, how it feels at high speed. Um, we'll be doing a landing here, probably the next mission or the one after, uh, so we can get more into that. But just, yeah, just fly the traffic pattern. Google, you know, airport traffic pattern. You'll learn what to do, what it looks like. And uh, just keep doing that again and again, and believe it or not, you, you get a much better feel for things that you can't physically feel. You can almost feel the pressure in the stick sometimes if you're, you know, if you get enough practice in. So, all right, so we're going pretty quick here. Again, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next mission.